Welcome back, Cheapo fans. In the Cheapo Spotlight today, the all-new Qming FSK 830D Plus. For y'all, Cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. The Qming came from Amazon. Overnight, quick delivery, free, all in, 10 bucks. Wow, cheap has never been so much fun. The 830D Plus is part of the 830 clones. Yes, these have been around forever, and they have proven themselves to be of the utmost in terms of reliability and cheapness in the multimeter genre. Kimming ships in a pretty decent little box. Wow, we don't normally see a colored box for a cheapo like this, but yeah, nice, hard, sturdy, well-packaged. No worries about anything accidental happening. And as well, we got those test leads, which we'll take a look in a second. And we've got a wonderful little user manual. And look, it's in color. Color for a cheapo. It's really nothing more than a pull-out brochure, but you know what? Works for me. Test leads are rated for 1,000 volts. Now, they don't actually don't have a cat rating uh, per se, but oh boy, 1,000 volts. You know, take that with a grain of salt. That being said, they are relatively thick. Uh, PVC style, definitely not silicon, but you know what? I've seen a lot worse in the cheapo round. And if we look at the ends, they are that mini type of shroud, uh, not your standard um, length shrouding. So, oh yeah, you know, but uh, all being said, it feels fairly decent. Now, if we try the pole test, uh, yeah, it doesn't come loose. That's a good thing. Uh, should be interesting. Meter itself, it's actually a little bit on the chunky side. Yes, this is a chunky cheapo, but uh, you know what? Hey, that's okay. Feels good in the hand, has a good solid mm, feel to it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, not going anywhere. Have a rubber boot, which actually does come off. A little on the cheap side, but let's face it, it's a cheapo meter to begin with, so what do you expect, right? At least it's got a boot. And yeah, you can definitely one hand it on the ground. Uh, yeah, and look at that. We even have a little tilt stand. Oh, beautiful. A little bit more than your standard 90 degree angle here. It's a little more recessed, but yeah, all things said, works. Meter itself is powered by two AAA batteries, and we have a uh, screw going into a plastic housing, so no threaded insert. That's too bad. Now, if we can compare Mr. Qming to the typical 830 clones out there, you can see he is definitely a chunky, uh, thicker than your average 830 here. Um, even thicker than our 830D over here, which is a pretty thick little 830 clone again. Um, but once again, you know, it's all being said. It's all relative. Uh, yeah. Two 830D clones here. Um, once again, yeah, a little bit more heft with the cuming. Uh, both have that same selector switch. Definitely a little bit bigger on the cuming. But what I do like... We take a look at the display, uh, you know, a bit bigger, a little easier on the eyes, the cuming. Uh, nice contrast, however, on the smaller 830D+, Plus. but uh, overall, you know, I kind of prefer the cuming. Now, the cuming also has a backlight. Look at that! Now, this is a really nice looking green backlight. Uh, yeah, you don't have that on the 830D Plus clone on the right, so that is always a bonus. Now, fortunately, the Qming backlight has the lifespan shorter than a mayfly. We're talking mere seconds here. Uh, yeah, four seconds tops, and it's lights out in Georgia, but uh, eh, at least it has a backlight. Now, you can hold on to that backlight while you're working in your dark abyss, and guess what? It's not going to go out as long as you keep the backlight button held down. So, eh, food for thought. Starting off with the Rody selector switch at the midnight or off position. Volts AC, up to 600 volts. Battery test mode, 1.5 and 9 volts. DC current, up to 10 amps. Continuity and diode. Resistance, up to 2 mega ohm. DC volts, up to 600 volts. The top left, we have our backlight button. And on the far right, we have our hold standard one touch. Below are three input jacks, high current amps on the far left, our common or neutral in the middle, and finally in the far right are volts, resistance, and milliamps. The test leads are in those input jacks, nice and solid. Yeah, not going anywhere. Uh, well, that's a good thing. Sometimes in the cheaper round, we have a tendency to have flaky connections, but uh, yeah, no flakiness going on here. No flakiness. None whatsoever. For whatever reason, Cuming decided not to put a volts AC signifier 
on the rotary selector switch, so just be aware that is volts AC. Now this 2000 count non-auto-ranging multimeter is sitting in millivolt mode right now. 250 millivolts is what we wanted, and it's basically what we're getting. Good stuff. All right, let's try 2.5 volts. Now we're going to be over, so we're going to have to change that selector switch. Move it one up, and 2.50 volts, spot on. Good stuff, giving. Hey, I said spot on. Get back up there. 2.50. <laughs> Thank you. AC volts right now, 120 volts. What we should be looking at. Let me just get those leads in there. There we are. 121. Yeah, pretty well spot on now. Remember, there are no bells and whistles with this meter. No flashlight, no NCV, no live, nothing. Yeah, bare bones. In resistance mode now, sitting at 1 mega ohm. Uh, about 8 counts off. Oh, let's take it down. Let's try 100K. Oh, wow. Let's try 200K. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, wow. It is really slow. Uh, let's try 500K. There we go. 900K. Oh, painful, painfully slow. Uh, okay, let's try 11K. 31. Yeah, well, there you go. Looking at the resistance on those test leads, about 0.4 of an ohm. Not bad, considering these are really cheapos. Once again, we don't have a rel feature on the meter, so we'll have to do a little bit of math. I hate math. Well, I don't mind it. I just... Ugh, not one of my favorites. Looking at that lab resistor, 100 ohm is what we want, and if we take off that 4, it'll be pretty well spot on. So, uh, good stuff. Little cuming. You're an accurate little cheapo. Okay, LED time, here we go. I don't have a whole lot of confidence, but uh, yeah, nothing there on the green. On the yellow, it is lit, it is lit. The red, the red, yes, we do have a red lit, but no forward voltage drop yet. And the white, no. So really two out of five in terms of illumination and 0 for five in the forward voltage drop department. Eh, sucks. Verifying a standard diode and no worries. Output voltage in dial mode is a balmy 2.4 volts. Yeah, just not enough. Take a quick look at that battery testing functionality. Now this meter does things a little bit differently. Uh, looking at the manual, it tells you for that battery testing mode, a 1.5 volt battery, you should see an output resolution of around 41 milliamps. So uh, that is how you're gonna gauge your battery, whether it's good or not. Unlike a lot of the testers where they basically put a slight load on the battery and they just give you that voltage readout. Here we're looking at current. So here we go. On the top now is a Duracell, which I know is starting to go south. Let's try it out. Now remember 40 or above is the magic number for being good and we are bad. 32.5, definitely on the low side. So we know this is no good. Now here's another battery, fairly new, not brand new, but new enough. Let's check this one out. And yeah, there we are, around 40, so the magic number, so we know it's good. Good stuff. Okay, here we are, continuity time. Stock test leads, three, two, one. Wow, it is scratchy, and it's really low, it's really low. It is fast though, fast and scratchy. Hmm, interesting, let's try the Probe Masters. Here we go, Probe Masters. Wow, quite a difference. It actually turns that scratch into more of a latched continuity. Very fast, a little bit louder, but still really low. Interesting. Fifty-six decibels, the maximum output volume in continuity mode. And I've been in the high current mode for about two minutes now, sitting around 5.3 amps. And, you know, all is well. Surprisingly, the leads aren't even toasty. Uh, yeah, I thought they'd be on fire by now, but, uh, yeah, looking good. In milliamp mode, this only has a 200 milliamp maximum rating, but uh, it's getting there, not a problem. Let's just take it up a wee bit, wee bit, shall we? 
at the cusp of 200, still looking good. And we are now over limit, bring it back down. Yeah. Alrighty, we haven't done this in a while. Here's some high voltage coming. 600 volts DC minimum, maybe a thousand. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Three, two, one. Bada boom, 500, 600 volts. We're not getting any sort of announcer telling us we are in high voltage. Uh, Try that one more time, here we go. Over 600 volts. Yeah, it is able to withstand it. No snap, crackle, pops. But no uh, audible alerts or even an enunciator saying we are in the high voltage realm. But it stood the test. Okay, here we are with the guts of the unit. Uh, on the reverse side, we have our speaker piezo. And what do you know? Look at that. It's right where the cutouts are for the volume. Wow, they got it right this time. Somebody got the memo this time. Here we have our uh, power feed for those two AAA batteries. And, and let's take a closer look at that input protection. First, we're going to look at those input jacks. Um, really, they are the cheap, cheesy variety. They are split, but, you know, really tin, tinny. Uh, yeah, um, the soldering is okay. Looks like it's hand soldered for sure, but at least it's thick globs. So yeah, it's gonna last a little bit longer. Now this is an unfused high current meter. So we don't have any sort of fusing going on for those 10 amps. Uh, what we do have though is that current shunt right here. That's where all the juice is running over. On the milliamp side, we do have a fuse right here. It is a pigtail style fuse. Why, oh why, they give us one of these, but that's what it is. So if you blow it, then you're gonna have to desolder these uh, connectivity connections and put in a new pigtail. Now that being said, pigtails are a dime a dozen. They're really cheap and they're available everywhere, but you know, definitely a little more hassle than just replacing a standard fuse. As well on the voltage side, we do have a little PTC surprisingly, but that is always a good thing. And yeah, there is our main IC, it is cobbed. Uh, we have a dual op amp over here, dual, uh, LM358. As well, if you like to play, we have a little trim pod here for the voltage. Uh, there you go, self calibration, always a good thing with the cheapo. At the top of the meter, nothing special going on. There is our zebra strip over here that feeds the LCD display. Uh, yeah, just your basic connectivity going on here. So all in all, you know, it is a cheapo, really tiny, tiny PCB. Already gonna put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Qming FSK 830D Plus. Well, it is definitely a cheapo clone. 830Ds are all over the place. And here's another rendition. Doesn't do anything new. Really doesn't do anything that exciting. Um, yeah, it is what it is. So what is it? Well, it's a good cheapo meter. If you want a basic, throw in the toolbox, throw in the car. Heck, just throw it anywhere. This thing is a beast. These little things are definitely robust and can take a lot of abuse. So great to have one of these cheapos anywhere you need a multimeter. Really though, it's a very basic meter, especially in the year 2020. Uh, a low resistance range, doesn't do capacitance, doesn't do a whole lot. That being said, if you just want to check voltage every now and then, maybe current, keep it all on the low side, you should be fine. It's a cheapo at a cheapo price. The Qming FSK 830D Plus gets a solid three out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, got some good stuff coming around the corner and not just multimeters. Stay tuned. Till the next one, keep on testing.